list of books and pass it on to your English faculty. They will share it with you. Try to read as many books as you can. Make it a good habit of reading. Now you can read them online. You don't really need a physical book. Many books, good books, classics can be read online. Now, when it comes to writing, one point which I mentioned is that your handwriting. By looking at your handwriting, I was quite happy. All of you are writing legible. Legible means that writing which can be read. That is important. We need not write calligraphy. Calligraphy is artistic writing. If you write, no problem. I'm very happy if you can write calligraphy. But the requirement of handwriting is in case you use a document which is handwritten, then your writing should be understood by everybody. Recently, I took a prescription to a medical shop. They gave me three medicines. They couldn't give me the fourth medicine. They said, we don't understand what is written. This is a standard joke about medical handwriting. But I have seen medical doctors having writing like pearls. So we can never generalize by saying, this one is good, this one is bad, or anything. That I made out from these two-day workshops how balanced your thinking has become. Today, did you notice the way you all were presenting? Both sides, which makes me so happy. Because more and more people, as they grow up, they start becoming one-sided. They lose balance. They become totally bent towards a particular side. That is not a good human being at all. We should look at all the perspectives. So look at your handwriting, see if you can improve it. If it is good enough, leave it at that. When you are writing, what is required is a discipline of your mind, which is called structuring of thought. So, if you structure your thoughts properly, there will be no scratches in your writing. Some of you wrote feedback, but there were quite a few scratches because thoughts were coming again and again. I'm not telling you it as a mistake. I'm telling you that in future when you write, you know, if your answer script comes, your examination script comes, without those scratches and overwritings and, you know, a confusion of ideas, it shows that your thoughts are not structured. You lose out marks also. That is important. When you're writing to somebody, the document, suppose you're not handwriting it. I, I'm not speaking about handwriting now. You're doing it on your computer. Then you don't bar worry about handwriting, but worry about structuring. You start writing something, then you forget that, you write something else, then you write something, the same thing you repeat again in different forms. That means your mind is a little confused. So structuring your thought is a very important part of writing. Now when you get down to writing, you must find out for whom you are writing it. You know, this is for your college tomorrow when the inspectors will come to see your college. Is your college good enough for getting accreditation? I saw that you got a grade. So they will look at this. So who are you writing it for? You are writing it for people who are experts, who are outsiders, who are others. Isn't it? So you must use those words, that vocabulary, that those ideas which you think will be beneficial. That is another. I'm not telling you about your feedback. I'm giving a general comment now. You've written well in your feedback. I'm not commenting about that. When you write anything, find out for whom you are writing it. Suppose you write a covering letter when you're applying for a job. I think all of you are in first year. First year, second year. So you still have another year or two before you apply for a job. I don't think anybody is going to discontinue the course and work for a job. We prefer to study. Therefore, if you are after two years or after one year, if you're writing a covering letter, which goes with your application for a job, now you will have to write, obviously, a formal letter. You cannot say, 
please give me a job because I'm the best. That is not the kind of letter you will write. You will introduce yourself. Usually in a communication skills workshop, that is the first activity we do. Somebody said we needed more activities. That's a wonderful suggestion. Have a workshop. You don't need me. Have a workshop which is activity-based. I also gave your madam some ideas about having an English inter-college student seminar. Inter-college, BCom colleges only, student seminar based on your English syllabus which you have. First year has English, so second year also has English. Based on that syllabus, let them make a presentation, group presentation. What you did today, you took a story and you made your own thing on the story. It was very good. So you can do anything with anything, please remember. And there is a lot of scope for this. So when you're writing, suppose you're writing a presentation, then you have to be formal. When you're writing a cover letter or you're writing an application for a job, you have to be very formal. If you're writing an email to a friend, you need not be very formal. There is a different etiquette for email writing. There is a different etiquette for snail mail writing. Earlier, we used to write long mails. If you look at 18th century, 19th century, you will find that each letter would be 20 pages, 25 pages, almost like a long short story. You had entire novels also written in the form of letters. This is called as epistolary. Epistle means letter. So we say epistle, letter, epistolary, a novel in letters. Two people are writing to each other. So those are the, the entire story goes off in those letters. Like that, writing in different contexts, a simple informal letter is different. If you look at an invitation, you know, when you get an invitation for a birthday party or a wedding, etc., that's another kind of writing. The basic unit of writing is also very important. And that is a paragraph. First you write sentences and then you write paragraphs. So please keep in mind that sentences which are connected to each other in thought and structure can form a single paragraph. If the thought changes, paragraph also changes. We forget many times. Suppose in the feedback you want to say, these, these, these I learned, these things I could not learn. Or Madam did this and we did this. That is two paragraphs, it's not one paragraph. We feel feedback is continuous. Now the most important part of any writing is a title which most of you forgot. What is the name of the workshop? Yes, LSRW. Nowhere is it written. What are you writing now? What is this piece of writing which you did? Feedback. Very rarely a few, you know, a handful of students have written the word feedback. Many of you have mentioned LSRW in your written matter, but not as the title. You say, workshop on so-and-so, feedback. That should be the first thing you should have written. You can't write, you know. If somebody asks you, who are you, you don't say, I study BCom. Isn't it? You say, don't change it. If you say, myself, and then you give your name, please change it. Don't say myself. Myself is a very precious word. Don't use it so casually. Suppose you say, a small child says, I feed myself. Till now my mother used to feed me, now I feed myself. Subject is the same as object. That is called reflexive. Subject, object, same noun or pronoun. That is one use of myself. The other is emphasizing. I myself ate, that means you didn't eat, you didn't eat, you didn't eat, I ate. I want to emphasize I. While writing, we emphasize by underlining. We put red color, green color. While speaking, we have no emphasis. So nouns, 
verbs, these have their emphasizing words because these are most important. You want to emphasize a verb, you use do or does or did. I do know English. If you say I know English casually, somebody says, no, 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 you don't know English. You want to stress I know. How to stress the word no? You say I do know English. That is the stress. The word do emphasizes the verb. The word, these are called emphasizing pronouns. Myself, yourself, himself, herself. Emphasis for the noun or pronoun. The other usage is reflexive. It has two functions. Same pronoun, two functions. You must know whether you're doing. If it's a transitive verb, subject, object, same, then the self form can come. If it is emphasizing either subject noun or object noun, immediately following it, <clears throat> it can come. The teacher wants to meet you yourself. You say, teacher wants to meet me. No, no, not me, my friend. You say, no, the teacher wants to meet you yourself. You are emphasizing you by putting yourself. These are all significant. So that is the third point about writing. And that is, be very careful about grammar, spelling, punctuation. I already told you about vocabulary. Use the right word. Formal, informal, use right word. Now what am I telling you? Use correct grammar. Spelling, you know, real problem spelling scores. I told you, English is not a phonetic language. You say P-U-T put, you say B-U-T but. This is an old Hindi movie where there are many such jokes. But we are not joking with the language. We are just saying that Indian languages are phonetic languages. If you write ka, ka and a, you always say ka. If you write k and a, in, in uh, English you might pronounce it in a different way. K is pronounced as ka, ch is pronounced as ka, sometimes other alphabets are also pronounced as ka. We cannot guarantee by saying this is this. So we learn spellings the hard way. When you are reading what you have to do, use your mental camera. When you look at a word, that should immediately go into your mind as a photograph so that you don't make mistake in that spelling. I remember in a school, they would make us do, if we made a mistake of spelling, we had to write it 50 times. After writing it 50 times, we would never make mistakes. So we were so careful. Now I told you, be careful of your handwriting. All of you have written in a beautiful handwriting. What happens on the day of the exam? First page, very nice, neat, clear. Last page, nobody can read. It reads like some ants, you know. The ant jumped into the ink and then the ant walked all over your sheet. It doesn't look like writing at all. We, because your time management was bad. You spend more time on the first question. You have no time for the last question. So you start writing fast, 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 which is not good. So do all these things. These are all ways of teaching yourself discipline because writing is the best way of disciplining yourself. If you get into the habit of writing every day, one page, it will be very therapeutic. Therapy is like treatment, you know. You have great excitement. Don't jump around. You might break your bones. You take a page and write down, today I'm really excited. Why? One full page, the reasons you're excited. Your mind is at peace like that bird in our story. You remember the bird? Your mind is at peace because you were very excited. Now you wrote down you're excited. If you've written well, show it to your friends. They might enjoy reading while you're excited. Today you're very depressed. Oh, Monday morning I don't want to go to college. Don't get depressed. Take a piece of paper. Your LSRW is getting practiced. Your depression is also decreasing. You're coming and attending classes in college. So writing is great therapy. Writing is great discipline. We should cultivate the habit of writing at least one page per day. In our school, we used to write our diary every day. They made us, you know, 
You want to read a book, you can write, read the diary of Anne Frank. Young girl of, you know, the Holocaust. Do you know what is the Holocaust? Read a little bit of... Uh, some boys are very well informed, girls. You know, that is the great advantage boys have. They have much more information than you have. Girls are only busy talking about what clothes shall we buy, what food shall we eat. Don't be like that. Now the girl-boy difference has gone away. If anybody knows about the Holocaust, use it at a difference. I recently visited one year back, you know, a place called Auschwitz. Oh my God, days after that I couldn't get rid of my depression. You can still smell those places. You can see that, you know, how they were carrying their combs, their mirrors, their clothes, still lying preserved. But that is not the only thing. It has happened all over the world. This kind of genocide, this kind of killing, Spanish Inquisition, if you read about these, you will find how cruelty has been a part of human beings. So what is new about us? Let us be kind. Let's not be cruel. So writing about these ideas, get a new idea every day, talk to your friends, share your new ideas every day, and then you write about it. Just one page like you wrote just now. Doesn't take more than five minutes. Most of you finished in five minutes. That gives you a good awareness, a good language. It gives you confidence. It gets rid of fear. You know, morning we discussed fear. We have fear of writing. Not only you, all of us have. As we become more and more senior, we do a lot of research. We have to write every day. There's reluctance to write. If writing assignment comes, I will say, not now, not now, not now. Yesterday, a big book came from California. I have to review it. Like girls were telling me they have to review. So I have to read that 1,000 page book. I started yesterday evening, I could read about four pages. And I have to write a review. Imagine, I also have the same reluctance, but we have to force ourselves because it's a good product. That writing is a good product. Don't force yourself to do things which are, the result is not good. Don't force yourself to do harmful things. But beneficial things you do. So if you cultivate this habit of writing every day, you say what to write. You are here with your friends the whole day. Can't you take up newer topics? How many new topics you came across today? You tell me. I just gave you a hint by giving you uh, themes for each of these stories. The book doesn't give all the themes like I gave. I gave you the theme. I didn't give you any idea. The ideas which you gave are purely your own ideas. So can't you have? This group can meet once a week for 10 minutes. For the next 50 weeks, you are assured that each week, one student will talk about one topic which is of universal interest. Can you do that? Half an hour per week, this same group, you're practicing your English, you're practicing your reading, because you'll have to read up something. Each day, 50 people are learning, I mean each week, 50 people are learning some absolutely new topic. Some of you nodded when I said, do you know Holocaust? There are so many other things. When I said Spanish Inquisition, nobody nodded. Read it up. It was such cruelty. They would pull off the tongue and they said, don't worry, we are saving your soul. Don't feel bad. They would cut off the hands. They said, don't feel bad. Don't say anything. They would burn the body and they'd say, don't feel bad. 18 year old, you know, I told you, Joan of Arc, the story I was telling in the morning. They burnt her and they said, don't feel bad. We are saving your soul. So that was the Spanish Inquisition, terrible things. But they were doing it, they thought, for a good cause, and that is the cause of religion, the cause of God. So these things, when we learn from history, these things, when we learn from science, from civilization, ideas of the ancient Greece, ideas of ancient India, 
there are so many similarities you will find thousands of years ago how two civilizations are thinking similarly these ideas if you get you become more knowledgeable than what knowledge you get from your books this is an extra knowledge which will always keep you on top that is what we want we want your awareness your knowledge there is a saying that those who do not learn from history are condemned to repeat it so if we know all these aspects which happened in human civilization then we learn it's okay let's become better now let's become different let's become more progressive now if the world is coming to an end with you know global warming then better we speed up our progress isn't it we have to do quickly so that we can save the planet we can save it by our proper behavior our thoughts a good thought which circulates in a single place brings out a good vibration that also is a part of ecology a negative thought brings a negative vibration so when you sit with yourself think something write it down read it to yourself make your friends read you are practicing writing you are practicing a mental balance a mental treatment such a person will not feel bad i think since you all are in the first year you are last year's intermediate students where it became very fashionable to do something you remember anybody who had no work they would go and commit suicide this past time you know my favorite hobby what is your favorite hobby oh committing suicide how many times can you commit it only once that is foolish if you fail in an exam what you should do is okay i failed let me face it somebody said you know that swami ji said you know don't run away from the somebody told vivekananda don't run away face them face them and then they will run away so face your problem like that i have failed that is my problem next time i will get the first mark that is motivation can't we do it it needs hard work it needs our telling ourselves i will do the best i will do the best remember nobody is less intelligent than anybody else here all your students the lakhs of students who appeared for the exam none of the persons who failed is less intelligent than those who passed there is only less effort they did not make effort from childhood they came to that level well they failed their marks might have been calculated wrongly then they could have waited till the marks were calculated what didn't they have self confidence they didn't have faith in themselves they say okay i write the exam let me wait if i really fail let me write again life doesn't end like that so when we have positive thoughts when we have positive outlet right writing skill then our mind remains healthy we are trying to do a lot for our healthy body i see everybody walking in the morning we love morning walk but what are we thinking in the mind oh today whom i am going to torture whom i am going to hurt whom i am going to abuse so what are you doing unhealthy mind healthy body what we require healthy mind healthy body so are you monitoring your thoughts keeping your thoughts you know giving good exercise to your brain good food to your brain good washing and bathing and cleaning and dressing makeup to your brain also not only physical body then healthy mind healthy body best way to get this is writing skill so i would recommend that all of you write if you make mistakes i'm telling you again and again if you make mistakes don't be unhappy making a mistake is a cause for happiness if you are willing to correct your mistake not a cause for happiness to make more mistakes causes for happiness is when you are willing to take that mistake and you are going to correct your mistake whatever kind of mistake we make to say sorry to others or to ourselves should not become an ego issue oh i cannot apologize i cannot say sorry that's not correct 
Sometimes we are so cruel to ourselves that we show it as cruelty to others. When you feel very cruel to yourself, write it down. You will cure yourself of your self-hatred. It is self-hatred which makes a criminal, you know. Criminals who hurt others, who harm others, hate themselves. They don't hate others so much as they hate themselves. So all these things, the mental issues, come, that is why I use the word therapy, they come away, they leave you if you write. So practicing writing, giving your ideas a scope for expression, improving your English, concentrating on your spellings and your grammar and your vocabulary, punctuation also, how to use capitals. In writing, this is very, very important. Unlike our mother tongue, in English, we have a capital letter and a small letter. Oh my God, why did they do that? They did it. We don't know why they did it. So we have to follow that rule. I find that anywhere in the paper, wherever they want, I is always capital. Because I capital I looks very smart. It looks very nice. There is no difference between capital P and small p, capital K and small k, because we have never learned the alphabet as two different things. How we learned, I don't know, but we learned it all together. It has become a mixture now. Use whatever you feel like. Pick up the alphabet and put it on your paper. No ability. The first part of learning a language correctly, to write the language, is capitalization when you're writing English. I'm not talking about our language because only one system of alphabet, no confusion. In English there is, all sentence beginnings are capital. I, when we use first person pronoun I, only then it is capital. <clears throat> when you're saying your college name, all the letters of the first letters of each word are capitalized. But if there is a function word, if there is a conjunction, if there's a preposition, if there's an article, no capital. So IIMC, management and commerce, and no capital. Off management, O oh, no capital. So Indian I capital, institute I capital, Commerce C capital, management M capital, none of the others are capitalized. So when we are writing the short form, we are only saying I, I, M, C. We are not saying O and A because we never capitalized them. Do you get my point? I told you about function words, content words. Now you're going to recycle these in your mind. You know, today the term is recycling. Once you recycle, the product is much better. What I told you is only partial. What you tell yourself will be total. All this comes to you when you write. When you write next time, you will find, where am I making mistakes in punctuation? Where am I mis making mistakes in capitalization? Should I put a comma or full stop or semicolon or colon? These doubts come to you. Immediately you know, okay, here is where I have to improve. So in this way, spelling punctuation, which is mainly in writing, Punctuation is important in pauses and intonation in speaking, not so much. You can't make out the punctuation mark when somebody speaks. Where is a question mark? If I say, have you finished? You automatically know there's a question mark. Am I saying, have you finished question mark? While speaking, I'm never saying question mark. By hearing the intonation, you know which is a question. Very often we say, you're coming? Question. The form is, are you coming? You're coming is good with right intonation if it's informal. But if it is formal English, we don't say you're coming, question intonation. We say, are you coming? Question intonation. The question intonation is different. You are coming is a statement. You're coming is a question. That kind of changes we do. So whenever we are writing, always it is better to read, to evaluate, to analyze your everyday writing. Now one last point which I want to tell you is, 
that be your own teacher, be your own student, be your own examiner, if you want self-improvement. So you are the student who wants to improve English. You are the teacher who is going to teach English also to that student who wants to improve. So what you have to do? To become a teacher, you have to improve yourself. So I gave you improvement techniques throughout the two days. So improve yourself. Then you become the student, you become the teacher. When you make the mistake, the student you makes a mistake, the teacher you finds the mistake and says, oh, I made a mistake. After a month, you know, I made this mistake, now I can correct like this. So you become your teacher. Then you evaluate, I told you, when you listen, speak. When you speak, record, evaluate. Then you read, you evaluate. If you want, you record your reading also. Some of you read very well. Some of you need some more reading practice. Evaluate by recording your own reading and see, you heard 50 people reading today. Can you not make out which is a good reading, which is not a good reading? Aim for that level. Writing, you write, you read, you record, you evaluate. At all points, when you have evaluated your LSRW, every day as i told you do it only for a week if your english is very good no need for more just one week whenever you feel a little doubt do it for a week small dose if your english is very poor do it for a year or two years or three years that much is there if you want to improve more do it for a longer time if you want to improve less, you feel, oh, I don't need a job which requires a lot of English. So I don't need to improve. I need to know three, four languages. So let me not learn only English. So improve little. Either improve lot or improve little. Telling you a few of these points. So make it a habit, even if it is only for a few days, to do all the four listening, speaking, reading, writing. Listening, you are getting plenty of listening that is in your college because all are speaking to you in English, giving you lectures in English. But none of you is concentrating on the English because if you concentrate on the English, you will fail in your commerce papers. Okay, don't do that. But you can always find out whether any part of their English lecture is beneficial for you. You can help get some help. You have an English class also, there you can concentrate on the language. Speaking as far as possible, make occasions to speak. You are here for two more years or for three more years, for four semesters or six semesters. Make as many occasions as you can. Have as many events. The event planning should be done by you. The event idea should come from you. Only support should be taken from your teachers. No student should require support. Therefore, you need to do a lot of thinking what all we can do for the whole college which will, you know, make this college get more and more placements because English has become very good. Some of you have good English. You can take up the role of mentors, teachers for others. Suppose you find in this group, there are four or five people who are very good, there are two or three people who are very good. Catch hold of them and say, hey, your English is very good. Can we talk to each other in English every day for half an hour? That means you are searching. The person who becomes your teacher is now equally benefited. Because teaching is the best way of learning. Nobody can learn so much as they can learn by teaching. Okay? So please do that and then you will find that benefit has come. Okay? You have something else now to do? Feedback. So you have an official feedback. Very good. Please give your official feedback. I'll give you two minutes. By then the guests might come.